This is Anthony Priscilla. Today doing some uh, theory of equations, zeros of polynomials with his college algebra class. And we've already defined zeros, stated the remainder theorem, factor theorem, division algorithm, did some problems with, uh, involving uh, synthetic division. And what we were working on now was if you're given one zero, factor the polynomial. And the way we were doing that, like number nine, was, okay, we're told negative two is a zero of, uh, is a zero with multiplicity two. We did the synthetic division twice. And then after that, we got something that we could factor. So it's real easy now to look at the zeros. The zeros are negative 2, negative 5, and 6. The natural question to ask is, well, what if you got something here, this quadratic, what if it didn't factor? And all of you know the answer to that. You might not want to know it, but all of you do. If it doesn't factor, you're going to have to use the quadratic formula. And that's what number 10 is. So that's the first one we're doing today. Given that 4 is a 0, find the remaining zeros. So we know that 4. So we're going to do what we did uh, on number 9. Set up the synthetic division. Put a 4 here. Then write the coefficients. 1, negative 10, 42, negative 72. And let's see. Carry down the 1. 1 times 4 is 4. Negative 10 plus 4, negative 6. Negative 6 times 4, negative 24. 42 minus 24 is 18. 18 times 4 is a positive 72. Getting us a 0, which shouldn't be surprising. As we were told that 4 is a 0. So this started with the x to the third. So down here we'd have an 1x squared minus 6x plus 18. The natural question is, well, how would we use that? Or what can, this isn't going to factor. 1 times 18, 2 times 9, 3 times 6. You can give it a try if you want to, but it's not going to factor. So to figure out the zeros there, what numbers make it zero? You're going to have to use the quadratic formula. A is 1. B is negative 6. C is 18. And minus B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So plugging in minus B, that would be negative negative 6. 6 plus or minus square root of b squared, negative 6 times negative 6, 36, minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 times a, 2 times 1, and simplify under the square root, the 4 times 1 times 18, 4 times 1 is 4 times 18, 72. So we have underneath here a 36 minus 72, which would be a negative 36. It's been a while since we simplified a square root of a negative. A square root of negative 36, y'all remember, that is a 6i. So replace all of that square root with 6i. So we have 6 plus or minus 6i all over 2, which uh, we can't leave like that. And you can't just simplify. Do you remember how to cancel this? You don't just cancel the 2 with one of those 6s. You've got to separate it. So it would be 6 over 2, 3 plus or minus 3i. Hmm. 
Now that's all well and good, provided you know one of these zeros. The natural question is, well, how would you find those zeros if uh, they weren't there? And that's what we, the next group of problems are. Something called the rational zero test. Well, let's say, let's instead say finding rational zeros. How do we find the rational zero? The rational numbers you always call are just the numbers that can be written as fractions. Rational numbers are the, you know, the integers together with the traditional fractions. So, possible rational zeros of the polynomial p of x are in the form plus minus ooh, my paper's crooked Let's see. plus minus the top number has to be a factor of the constant term. Remember, the constant term is that last number, the one that doesn't have a variable, over factor of the leading coefficient. That leading coefficient is the first coefficient. It's the one that has the largest uh, exponent on x. So to do this problem number 11, List all the possible rational zeros. Well, it's multiple choice. Try not to look at it. Okay? You start off writing out the factors of 8. That's the constant term. Don't worry with the minus. Well, 1, 2, 4, and 8. Then the factors of the leading coefficient 2, well, just 1 and 2. Now, all the possible are in this form. Plus, minus these numbers over those. So, 1 over 1, 1 over 2. 2 over 1, 2 over 2 we've already listed. That's a 1. 4 over 1, 4 over 2 is 2 we've listed. 8 over 1, 8 over 2 we've listed. So they're all the possible. And I, I may not have them in the same order that's listed here. Yeah, I do. It's B. This is actually very significant. Can you imagine? Suppose you needed to know which of those are 0. Well, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Here's 10 numbers. Out of all the possible real uh, rational numbers in the world, here are the only ten that could possibly be zero. If you wanted to find out which of those are zeros, what could you do? Well, either start doing synthetic division on each of them, or just uh, uh, let's see. Uh, no, my mind went blank. Okay. Uh, just start plugging each one of them in or doing synthetic division and see if which of them give you zero or a remainder of zero. We're out of time, so uh, I'll let y'all go. Okay, bye.